Hello YouTube, I am here with another interesting topic related to microservice architecture. If you want to learn the communication between microservices like synchronous asynchronous communication with event streaming, then this tutorial is going to be the only tutorial on YouTube you need to watch. So let's get started. Well, we have a lot of interesting stuff in our agenda. We have introduction that matters. We'll talk about monoliths versus microservices. I'm actually not going to dive into details of monolith and microservice architecture. In this case, I will just compare monolith and microservice architecture because the purpose here is to dive into details of microservice communication. So this is going to be a simpler introduction to microservice communication. We'll have synchronous communication. Then we'll talk about asynchronous communication. And at the end, we will have a session related Related to event streaming. So let's get started. In our monolith application, we have this type of general architecture. Of course, you can use any uh, architectural style, architectural pattern in your application. For example, in our case, we have layered architecture. You can use onion architecture, entire architecture doesn't matter at the end you will have one single code base uh, in our case we have ui business and data access layer our ui will access to business in a single process the same is applicable from the business to data access in monolith we have single code base in monolith architecture we have one single huge team that work on the application we have simpler deployment at the end we have let's say uh, one main artifact to deploy we have limited scalability. You can use interfaces, abstract classes, whatever you call it in your uh, programming language, but in general, we have limited scalability. We have slower innovation. It means when you have small changes in your application, your application should be deployed from scratch. This is a big problem for us. We have title coupled dependencies. We have all these layers directly uh, communicated with each other and they have title coupled communication. And in our monolith architecture, we have mostly same skeleton guys. For example, if you are working on a C Sharp Web API application, uh, all the developers from the team related to backend should now the ASP.NET because we don't have microservice. In our microservice, we may have different skeleton guys. Like for example, one service may be written in PHP, the other one in C Sharp, and etc. And monolith also has it is on uh, better uh, elements like fast communication between functionalities and also always succeed in operations from the communication perspective. It means we, when you are calling some functionality, let's say in our monolith, we have multiple functions. If you are calling this functionality, it means you will always succeed in calling this. It doesn't matter if this function will fail or not. At the end, you are reaching to this functionality without any issue. In our microservice architecture, we have multiple smaller services like multiple bounded context we have microservice a b c d and per microservices we may have uh, different databases and we have a responsibility segregation between our microservices okay so we are dividing our um, huge application into smaller ones in our microservices, we have independent microservices. We have scalability. You can add additional microservices to your system. Uh, we have uh, fastest innovation. Uh, if you are changing one microservice, there is no need to uh, deploy entire application. It is enough to deploy the changed microservice, and that's all. We have loosely coupled dependencies in microservice. Microservice A, B, C, D will communicate with other with each other, even now without any information about each other. So it is really Really easy to lose a couple uh, dependencies for microservices. We'll talk about it. And we have increased complexity from the complex perspective. We have a lot of microservices. So these microservices brings a lot of complexity from the learning curve also. So you need to uh, learn the microservice architecture. You, uh, your team should know the microservice architecture. And we have uh, from the communication perspective, we also have a lot of complexities for microservices. We have network communication overhead and we have debugging challenges when you have multiple microservices and they are interacting with each other. It is uh, a little bit problematic to debug the microservice. Actually, you can create a stop spot in a preprod or prod environment. It is really easy to, uh, it is really a little bit hard to work on that. So we have multi-language usage. So for microservices, it doesn't matter. You can use different or same programming language. For example, Microsoft A, you should use, you may use PHP, the Microsoft B, you can use um, C sharp and etc. And it helps you to have team with a different skilled guys. 
Cool. It is time to talk about microservice communication. We have two main options for microservice communication. We have synchronous communication and asynchronous communication. Let's talk about synchronous microservice communication. In synchronous microservice communication, we have a requester, we have a receiver. The requesting service sends a message and waits for a response from the receiving service before continuing. This is really important. We have some type of waiting mechanism. We have some type of block. We have some type of dependency. If microservice A sends a request to microservice B, it means that in synchronous context, microservice A will be blocked and will wait response from microservice B. And after receiving response, it will continue working. This is really important. This is a simple example for a synchronous communication. We have a shopping system. We, we are clicking the buy now. The request will be received by payment service and payment service will delegate a request with the proper arguments to the order service and will wait response. This is synchronous application. Uh, operation will wait response from the order microservice and then after operation done payment microservice will be notified and they will send appropriate response to the UI to be updated so we have as you can see we have some dependency we have some blocking operation between our microservices Let's talk about advantages and disadvantages of synchronous communication. Synchronous communication is really simple and predictable. The flow of execution is just straightforward. You're calling some type of operation and that's all. This is simple, very simple. So let's talk about, for example, you have console application, one class calls another class functionality. This is synchronous operation. You are waiting for some operation, yeah? We have immediate feedback. Uh, the requester receives the response immediately, making it suitable for interactive applications. And we have, of course, disadvantages. We have blocking operation. We are waiting for other microservices to um, give the proper response. We have some type of coupling between our microservices. We have actual title coupled mechanism in this case. So your microservice A directly calls microservice B. This is actually a title coupled mechanism between microservices. You want more example? Here you are. We have shopping cart checkout. The user adds item to the card and clicks checkout. In this context, we have synchronous communication like the card service sends order request to the payment mechanism. We have live chat support. We are um, uh, always using the live chat support with synchronous communication possibilities. We have uh, stock marketing, market trading applications. So uh, we have tons of examples using synchronous communication between microservices. So actually comparing synchronous and asynchronous doesn't mean that asynchronous is always better just use asynchronous communication. No, there is no such type of things. Uh, you should use them like Enyan symbol in your application. So you should use synchronous and asynchronous operations in parallel. But the only thing you need to understand that in synchronous operations, we we are waiting some type of response. Without this response, we cannot go further. If you are not waiting some type of operations to be finished, you can go ahead and that's completely okay. That's perfect. In this case, use asynchronous communication. Long story short about synchronous communication, we have immediate feedback and interaction. We have real-time decision-making and execution and tightly coupled workflows with high dependence. Let's talk about asynchronous microservice communication. In this case, we have still microservice A and B and we have communication between microservice A and B, but we have loosely coupled communication between them. We have decoupled dependencies between microservices. In the middle, now we have message broker. Microservice, if microservice A wants to reach out to microservice B to notify or to do some operation, just microservice A just puts a message to the message broker. And in this case, microservice B will take this message from the message broker, will uh, do some operation and will return response to the message broker and the same operation will flow to microservice A. Now we have decoupled mechanism between microservice A and B. This is really important. 
So the requesting service sends a message to the receiving service without waiting for the response. It is really important. You have a microservice A, microservice A notifies microservice B, notifies microservice B, and it can continue without waiting response from the microservice B. It is really important. Otherwise, if you have direct communication, if you need to get direct response from microservice B, the synchronous communication will be better for you. The response is delivered later, either through a callback or a separate channel like brokers. This is a simple example in our case. We have a registration form using this form. We are registering in some sort of systems and we have the registration service, which is responsible for taking the information from the registration form and do some operation like registering a user. And after registration is done, we need to notify a user about the registration process and send a welcome message, a welcome email. So we have not direct communication between registration service and mail service. Instead, we have some type of broker, some type of middleware between these microservices like registration service and mail service. It helps us easily decouple registration and mail service. Well, registration service doesn't know that there is a mail service. Registration service just puts information to the broker that, guys, I'm done, I finished registration. If you are responsible, go ahead, take this information, send mail. We may have another microservice to take this information to do other operations than, and rather than sending mail. So it is completely okay to have one to multiple microservices here because we have a middleware, we have broker between registration service and mail service. What are the advantages of using uh, asynchronous microservice communication? Now we have non-blocking operation. It means when microservice A uh, sends information to microservice B, th this is not blocking our system. This is not a thread blocking operation. We may continue without any issue. Decoupling our registration service doesn't now directly that we have mail service. Resilience, it is one of the important attributes of asynchronous communication. In this case, asynchronous communication can handle failures and tries more gracefully than synchronous operation. It is really, really important to understand. What are the disadvantages? Of course, for all the cases uh, like synchronous, asynchronous, we always have advantages and disadvantages. We have some type of complexity. Now you need to learn, I don't know, the Kafka, you need to learn other message blocking mechanisms. So we have learning curves. We have additional elements in our architecture. We have delayed feedback in synchronous communication. We have direct communication, immediate uh, response process, but in asynchronous, we have delayed feedback. More examples, of course, we have background processing and data analyst you can use asynchronous operation for it. Social media feed updates, for example, in our flow, we have user, user posts, content, or interact with others. In this case, from the asynchronous perspective, we have post service publishes a message to the feed queue, okay? And the feed service subscribes to the queue and updates the user feeds in the background. We have some type of background operation and all these background operations will be handled by asynchronous microservice communication. Long story short about asynchronous communication, if immediate response is not essential in your case, go ahead, use asynchronous communication. If you need to handle some operations using background tasks or you have long running processes, go ahead, use asynchronous communication. If you want uh, to decouple your systems and if decoupling and scalability are key considerations for you, you, then you should use asynchronous communication. Well, now it is time to talk about event streaming. What is event streaming actually? Event streaming is a common and powerful approach for asynchronous communication microservice architecture. Uh, please remember that asynchronous communication like a theoretical part of the microservice. So we have, in theory, asynchronous communication, but in practice, you can implement it using various ways. So the one of them is actually event streaming. Event streaming is one of the ways of implementing asynchronous 
communication. This is like architectural uh, decision and architectural pattern. We have architectural style, we have architectural pattern. Uh, we can implement one architectural style using multiple architectural patterns. The same is applicable for asynchronous communication and event streaming. Event streaming is actually one of the ways of implementing asynchronous communication. Event streaming is a core element of event driven architecture. And in event streaming, we have the term called event. What is event? It is actually a message carrying information about something that happened in the past signaling to other parts of the system that they need to take action. Let's talk briefly about even during architecture with Apache Kafka. In Apache Kafka, we have producer, broker, cluster, and consumer. Our producer is producing a data, producing a message in event. Uh, we have cluster with multiple brokers, but the brokers actually are servers. In our case, bootstrap servers, doesn't matter for now, just remember that we have in cluster, cluster consists from multiple brokers multiple servers to handle all of these queries in parallel. And we have consumers that um, consume data. Our producer doesn't know about our consumer, but producer produce a message and consume take, consumer takes this message and consume it. So we don't have direct communication between producer and consumer, but somehow producer and consumer can interact with each other. How? With helping Brokers. Brokers act a middleware. Broker acts as a separator. Brokers at a scale uh, acts as a scaling point in our system. So we have producer. Producer pushes event. Producer pushes event to the broker. In our broker, it uh, it it is coming to the topic. In topic, we have partitions and consumers consume information from the partitions. This is really easy. Uh, the infrastructure of event driven architecture. So, what is event streaming in this case? In this case, we have some type of pipeline of event. We have producer pushes event to the broker. Yeah. And we have consumer taking this event, then handling this operation again, and consumer may push uh, the handled information to the another topic, another broker. So we have some type of flow of this events. Actually, it is called event streaming process. And one of the best options for you to handle event driven architecture is actually using Apache Kafka. In our channel, we'll have uh, tons of tutorials related to Apache Kafka. We already have one of them. So that's actually all about microservice communication, like synchronous, asynchronous, and even streaming. If you like my videos, please don't forget to subscribe and hit like button. And if you want to learn more, just type in the comment below the topic name and I will create a separate tutorial uh, as you wish related to your favorite topic. So that's actually all. See you in the next video.